January 17, 2024, the day I'll never forget, I didn't get to use Krauser's knife. That night, I was wiped out thanks to Umbrella's Chad virus. Somehow, I survived, but many others weren't so lucky. I was asked to join a top-secret government program, not that I had a choice. The training, punishing missions, nearly killed me. But at least I can protect myself from Chris. If I could just go back to that night, the pain, this time. It can be different. Can you beat Resident Evil 4 VR with only knives? Hey hey hey! Welcome to my channel everyone, I'm the Global Cherry and today I will be attempting this challenge. Before I lay out the rules, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. The first rule is that I'm only allowed to use knives to damage enemies. The second rule is that my guns and weapons can be used for anything else. Now let's get to it. Blinking away the remnants of sleep, I found myself in the same spot, escorted by two officers in rural Spain. They both ditched me to sing Kumbaya, so I remained focused on my mission, saving the president's daughter. After investigating a dilapidated cabin, I arrive at the village, where one of the cops was being roasted like a marshmallow by the villagers. That doesn't sound like Kumbaya. As Leon Scissorhands, I tried to make peace with them by providing each of them haircuts. I then headed to the windmill, surprised the goat man, and escaped before some of the ganados noticed my presence. After multiple ambushes by the ganados, I made my way into a strange house where I met Luis once again before Big Cheese grabbed us. As usual, he seemed unfazed by the dire situation, seeked a good smoke, and gave us a tip on Ashley's whereabouts, the church. After encountering the merchant, obtaining a key, and fighting through hordes of villagers, I passed by Mendez's house. Big Cheese was not pleased. In the next chapter, we were on our way to the church and faced multiple obstacles, rabid dogs, rabid people, and no church key. After a quick detour to the fish farm for gas and taking down the biggest fish, I searched for the two stone heads by boat to obtain the church key. That fish wouldn't pick on Solomon else, so most of my energy was drained out of my body. After obtaining the church insignia, El Gigante blocks our path to the church. A lump formed in my throat as I recall him turning me into a pancake. But I won't let that happen, not this time. Therefore, I dealt with them and ensured El Gigante's inability to produce El Micros. and arrived at the church to save Ashley. I then escorted Ashley to an extraction point and encountered some trouble, but Louise helps us by ushering us into a house, leading us to survive the waves of Ganados until escape. After the escape, Sadler commanded his followers to stay on watch, so we have to be very cautious, they saw us. The Chainsaw Sisters once again approached me requesting to rearrange my organs, but I was too much of a sigma to let them. I lured the sisters and villagers away from Ashley, hoping that she didn't get out of the locker. And for once, she listened. Big Cheese then pursues us and it was time to grill him into a sandwich. As a fellow with knives, I couldn't grill him this time, but I could at least end his tap dancing days. As Ashley and I arrived at the castle, the zealots prepared a warm welcome party, but we told them we had to leave early. Salazar introduces himself within the castle and requests I hand over the girl. No thanks, bro. His zealots charged at me believing there was strength in numbers, but they did not know the strength of my knives. In the dungeon, I fall through the floorboards and make eye contact with Garador. I then told him I was not trapped with him, but he was trapped with me. Thank you. 
After another puzzle, we reach the water room, where things take a precarious turn for Ashley's safety. Is Ashley truly worth losing this challenge for? That's when I came to the conclusion to leave her. Bye, have a great time! As an agent, I pride myself on taking my work seriously, so with no choice, I used my pistol. Ashley was under the influence of Sadler separating herself from us, and on my way to her, I entered a wine cellar filled with zealots, especially a distinct red one, in between them. I used stealth to thin the ranks, but it didn't do much good. Eventually, I could stop the red zealot and gave him the Kruger treatment before escaping. After encountering an old flame, solving a lithograph puzzle, combating arachnophobia, and charging through castle battlements, we eventually found Ashley in the courtyard. The dogs weren't much of a threat in the courtyard, but the grand hall is where things took a turn. Obtaining the snake head and lion head was simple, but the goat head was a challenge because of this red individual. As Leon, I get trapped in a cage after obtaining three animal heads, and the zealots pursue Ashley, transitioning into Ashley's stealth section with the knights. As Leon, I cut to the ballroom to get to the throne room, where Ashley was being held captive. Two Garadors and Zealots were guarding the throne room, so I had an idea to make them fight each other. They were actually smarter than I thought. Once I got to the throne room, Salazar dropped me into a dark pit, so I fend for myself, outran the bugs, and reached the underground laboratory, the location of Vertigo. <laughs> After freezing Vertigo, I took the elevator, encountered Luis, and spent time with them, like the close friends we are. Luis and I led the Ganados on a goose chase, fought two El Gigante, embarked on a minecart ride together, and explored the catacombs. I was hoping for Luis to draw the armored gigante to me, to drop it in the pit, but he was being turned into an L pancake, so I had to resort to unconventional methods. As both of us took the lift, it was time to say goodbye to our old friend, because Krauser kills him before smoking could. After that eventful reunion with Krauser, we headed towards the clock tower and reached Ramon. Reaching the top of the clock tower was a challenge as the red zealots kept disarming me, but it was manageable with my many first aid sprays. In Ramon's boss fight, I felt like I didn't give him a fair chance with two golden eggs, so I decided to level the playing field by using one. Ada drove me to the island to rescue Ashley, so I wore a dapper outfit to show her I became a changed man. Once I reached the island, I lured the soldiers and pigmen to the merchant, took them out, hacked the turrets, and entered the area with the regenerators. As I set my eyes on them, I realized where Ashley's ballistics went, their booty. The first two regenerators were very easy to destroy, but after noticing more soldiers enter the lab, I figured I let the rest of the regenerators entertain them. After I gave Ashley medicine, we headed towards the umbrella lab Louise mentioned. To get there, we have to pass by a junkyard with a lift to take us where we need to go. Ashley and I explored the tight confines of a facility packed with soldiers, but with a flashbang, their weak spots were vulnerable to my attacks. They tried to kidnap Ashley again, but I, Leon Scissorhands, 
will ensure that doesn't happen. Exiting the facility's upper floor, we approach a river of sewage, and I hear that familiar, raspy breath, the regenerator. Or specifically, the Iron Maiden. I can't use my sniper rifle to shoot its weak spot, so I went for the booty, again. What the fuck? In waste disposal, I powered the terminal and protected Ashley from the soldiers just in time for her to drop an Iron Maiden from a bridge. The lift was blocked by a stone wall, therefore I covered Ashley while she mans the crane. One soldier wielded a rocket launcher, but as I couldn't take him out, I hid behind the crane with his friends. After the wall gave in, Ashley and I escaped, and I waved the rocket man goodbye. Sadler then captures Ashley after taking control of her mind. And to add icing to the cake, Major Krauser wished to end our history once and for all, and waited for us at the summit. After a quick visit to his tent, I figured out the real reason for his punishing missions. He had a crush on me, Leon Scissorhands. Well, you've really gone all out for me. You shouldn't have. A picture of me? How cute! I've been waiting for you, uh, rookie. I know you were. Ayo, hey, that ain't appropriate. During the first few segments of Krauser's boss fight, I ran through his obstacle course ignoring the taunts, and he showed me he meant business by shifting to his final phase. Krauser threatened to chop off my beautiful hair to add to his shrine, so I chopped his first. Yeah. In chapter 15, we head towards the base of a tower. Our friend Mike aided us in fending off the soldiers using his helicopter, and I made sure to get all the help I needed. After Mike fired a path into the bulwark gate, I pulled levers to open the cliffside gate, avoiding enemy attacks. Before Mike could get a chance to be rewarded for his efforts with the drink, Sadler erased him out of the picture. As Leon, I arrived at the specimen storage where I had to sneak by Iron Maidens on route to the sanctuary. Using my sniper rifle, I was able to distinguish which bags had the Iron Maidens and evaded them. Once we got to the sanctuary, Sadler forced me to become one with the holy body, but Ada prevented that from happening. After escorting Ashley to the Umbrella Lab, removing the parasites, and exploring the lab, it was time for the final boss. Osmond Sadler. Sadler wanted me to be one with his holy body so badly, so I did, by entering his holy body. In his second phase, I evaded his tentacles until Ada tossed me the rocket launcher to make Sadler small time. As we defeated Sadler, the island was about to blow. We escaped and rode off into the sunset, leading to the conclusion of this story. Mission accomplished! That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Let me know your opinions on this game and what challenge you want me to try next in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and that's all.